Welcome to CARES Podcast. Today, we have Jason Richter, Director of the National Nursing Assessment Service Program, NNAS, and Gail Waxman, who's also the Executive Director. We also have Ismail Assad, who is uh, a case manager at CARE and also a registered nurse with the London Health Sciences Centre. We'll start off by having a discussion about um, what the NNAS is. To briefly um, state, it is a not-for-profit organization that offers a streamlined process for internationally educated nurses, IENs, whereby they can submit their academic and professional documents for assessment. Every IEN who wants to work as a nurse in Canada will need to complete an application with the NNAS. We'll speak to um, Jason and Gail first about that organization. Jason, we'll start with you. Um, Can you give us a little bit of information about your background and what your role is at the NNAS? Uh, Certainly, and thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure to join the the podcast with CARE. Uh, Well, as you mentioned, I'm the director of the National Nursing Assessment Service Program. And here in, in our offices, we uh, are responsible for collecting the necessary documentation uh, and evaluating the international credentials collected for preparation of an advisory report, which then the IEN applicant can transmit directly to the regulatory body to proceed with uh, their application uh, towards uh, licensure with that regulator. Okay, great. And I'll extend the same question to you, Gail. Hi, thank you also for having me. I'm Gail Waxman. I'm the Executive Director of the National Nursing Assessment Service. Um, I have been in my role for about nine months. It's been a very busy nine months where I've been able to get a good sense of what the organization is hoping to achieve as well as what the needs are out in the uh, communities that we serve. And we're looking forward to the future and working uh, very hard to uh, meet those needs. Great. So can you tell, tell us, the audience, about the history of the NNAS? I understand it's a, a newer organization. Uh, and what is its mandate? The NNAS has actually been in operation for only five years. Um, it was formed by 23 nursing regulatory bodies in Canada, um, and that included representation from all the provinces except Quebec and the two territories. The NNAS represented was really something quite unusual in that all the regulators got together and there are three professions that are represented, registered nurses, practical nurses, and registered psychiatric nurses to harmonize all the requirements that they had for internationally educated nurses for the first phase of what is a 10-step process. So NNAS handles the first four steps of that process. And what that means is we review the credentials, we verify the identification in the credentials, and we also compare the education that the applicant has submitted, that the internationally educated nurse has submitted, to what a nurse in Canada would be learning um, today. Okay, so um, what happens during the um, assessment process? I understand it's it's sometimes uh, (laughs) might seem to be a very complicated process for some. Sure. Um, I'll start and then I'm going to ask Jason to um, join, okay. join in. NNAS has a number of different accountabilities. The primary accountability we have, obviously, is to protect um, the safety of the Canadian public. Uh, that's something when I speak to nurses, they nod their head vigorously and are completely understanding of that. At the same time, we are also committed to making sure that we provide good service to our applicants, and that we provide reliable quality information to the regulatory bodies who are our members. What we start with the process is there are a number of pieces to it. The first is we ask for a number of different kinds of documentation to verify identity, to um, verify registration as a nurse, to verify that you actually have been educated as a nurse, and then we also collect information from your employer. That helps the regulatory body when they're having to make the decisions because NNAS makes no decisions. We compile a profile that the regulatory bodies use to make decisions. Can have a better sense of your work experience and how you fit in with the regulations that they have. Um, And then we take the information and we uh, review it. 
We also collect information on the education that each applicant has received. And again, that is compared to the nursing education that a nurse in Canada would be receiving today. That's compiled into a report called an advisory report, and that is released to the regulatory bodies that the applicant designates. Yeah, and, and, and just to kind of uh, talk a little bit about that, Gail mentioned all the, the multiple pieces of information that we collect for each internationally educated nurse. And, and what we're in essence trying to do is, is paint a complete picture of that applicant's professional history in nursing. Uh, so, as she mentioned, we're collecting education documentation, information on each nursing registration an applicant's ever held, regardless of its current validity, employment practice in, in nursing conducted over the last five years, uh, language proficiency, uh, if necessary, uh, identity documentation. And, and what we're, we're really doing, uh, again, is putting that all together in a format that is complete, accurate, that is a kind of uh, shows the, the logical progression of an internationally educated nurse's is career. Now, uh, we also conduct, uh, as Gail mentioned, uh, a comparative analysis of, uh, of an applicant's internationally, international nursing education against that which would be uh, included in, in a Canadian uh, nursing education for that specific profession. And we're really analyzing the content of that education uh, by means of, of the documentation contained in the, uh, the educational syllabus. So we, we, we go to great lengths and, and take great uh, attention to detail in, in reading through uh, the content of each applicant's syllabus to do that comparative analysis uh, to that of a Canadian educated nurse. And it's really a fascinating piece of, of information. You know, we, we do a very uh, detailed analysis and it, and it can take some time. Well, it sounds very complicated. On average, how long um, do you expect uh, an assessment to be completed? On average, our applicants are receiving their advisory report within about a year. Okay. And that would reflect the majority of the applicants. There's a small group of applicants who, for a variety of reasons, take a bit longer. Sometimes they, uh, the applicant may have certain personal circumstances that causes the okay. delay. Um, mm -hmm. They may be delayed because of immigration. They may have had a personal situation in their family life that um, has put a delay on it. Sometimes, though, it has to do with third parties. Uh, we have to receive a certain uh, number of the documents from the original source, obviously, and that I'm sure makes sense to um, the listeners. And sometimes that can take longer for some applicants. Although that is a small number, we certainly are conscious of what that experience feels like and are doing what we can to assist those applicants. So if you wanted to share, say, a top five in terms of tips for applicants in order to expedite their assessment, well, not really expedite, I guess, but to ensure that everything that you're asking for, um, they're, they're supplying. Can you give us uh, some tips that they should um, be aware of? Why don't I start and then Jason, okay. um, I'm sure, has also some tips sure. to offer. Um, the first tip I would suggest is um, make sure to read all the information you can and ask as many questions as you like. Uh, we have an applicant support um, service that people can call, and that can be reached by calling toll-free 855-977-1898, or if it's more convenient, um, applicants can certainly email their questions to support at nnas.ca. And those are both good places to ask specific questions about the application or the application process. Our website also has lots of information on it and we would encourage everyone to read it, but sometimes you still have questions. Applicants so that have questions that are not related to their specific um, application but may have other questions generally can also feel free to contact our corporate offices at info at nnas.ca. 
Yeah, and and I would just kind of uh, like to echo that. You know, there's a lot of information on our website, and it is in incredibly important information. And while it may seem uh, very detailed in some cases and very general in others, it's it's important that our, our applicants take the time to go through that information so that there's nothing that they're unaware of connected with the process. We offer a, a several helpful tutorial videos that applicants can access, that they can take the time to listen to, that provide a little bit of a greater insight into the application process, some of the forms they're going to be generating as, uh, based on their application. And, and those videos can provide some, uh, some incredible helpful insight for our, for our applicants who are going through this process, uh, many uh, for the first time. Uh, also, comprehensive information is very important. When an applicant's completing the application, it's important that they list all of their nursing education programs, all of their nursing registrations that they've ever held, regardless if they're currently active or inactive, all nursing practice employment in the last five years. This helps avoid delays uh, in many cases down the road. Uh, as we start collecting documents, I mentioned we do a very detailed credential analysis on all of the documents collected. We're looking for information that's uh, consistent and that there's no discrepancies, there's no missing components uh, that are identified in part of the credential evaluation. So taking the time to read through the information on the website and putting together the, the most uh, complete application is really going to be a, a paramount benefit to the applicant going through this process. There are a number of other, depending on what jurisdiction an IAN is from, there are a number also of, of agencies like CARE that provide support on a whole range of issues because people, it's a person that's um, going through the process, not simply an application. And I really would encourage applicants to reach out to organizations like CARE who really can provide them with also some additional support. Well, thank you very much, Gail and Jason, for that overview of the NNAS and the application process. I, I want to uh, invite Ishmael to join this conversation. Now, Ishmael wears many hats here. He's uh, an international educated nurse. He's also a case manager at CARE and works in an intensive care unit at, as an RN with the London Health Sciences Centre in London, Ontario. Hello, Ishmael. Hi. Um, Ishmael, so can you start off by describing your own journey to registration? As Michelle said, I am an internationally educated nurse and RN in London Health Sciences. I work in the ICU in London and a case manager with CARE. I started my role actually two years ago. It has been a very um, interesting journey and uh, challenging actually, but um, I consider myself lucky. Uh, my registration process did not take uh, that long. Within six months, I was uh, registered and working in a full-time job in Ontario. But when I did my registration, I did not go through um, NNS. So I consider my journey right. to be successful with the registration and uh, with the achievements that I made over the last uh, 10 years that I have been a Canadian citizen and in, in Canada. So you mentioned that you did not go through the NNAS process, but certainly you've worked with uh, a lot of clients who have had to navigate that system. Um, what has that experience been like? Well, <laughs> this experience has been like, uh, I have to say, two sides. Some, some of the clients that I work with, yes, as Gail mentioned, they take like a year over a year uh, to finish. Some of them will take way longer than that, and those are special cases, as uh, Gail said. But in general, like my my aspect of it is like it is not an easy process, um, and I'm talking on behalf of so many clients that I meet on, on my office every day. Now, I know that it taken in consideration all these informations and steps that Jason and Gail have explained to us. Uh, but I would say it is a, it's not an easy process that the client has to go through, especially for some countries that uh, getting informations are almost impossible or, 
or uh, it's very hard to get any um, documents so clients will struggle and struggle and struggle and yet their file will be expired and then we have to go through the process again and again and verification process now i understand it's for the safety and uh, to protect the public but in general it's it's a hard process um, it certainly is for for some people. So I have a fun question for you, and perhaps Jason and Gail, you could participate in this one. So, okay, <laughs> if you had three wishes for the um, NAS or, or the process, what would they be? And Jason and Gail, could you um, <laughs> help out with these <laughs> wishes? <laughs> I, I, to be honest, to be fair enough, like I did like a random survey of my clients and I asked them this question. Uh, some of the questions are realistic. Some of them are like, I'm not going to mention uh, <laughs> <laughs> some of the wishes. Uh, but I mean, number one wish, like many of the clients that I asked about this, they wish that the process is a little bit more transparent, more, more uh, simpler. Um, there is one important wish here from one client, and that takes me to what Jason said to complete and accurate comprehensive analysis. Some of the clients complain that like, we went through our education and they are like uh, graduated from their countries and yet they will have a no score or their evaluations were not complete in some topics like for example like anatomy physiology and we all know that all nurses will take that but they had no marks on there now i don't know whether this is part of nnas or or the people or the countries that send the information to nnas those are my two wishes. Two wishes, the only two wishes. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go okay, over that. Okay. The rest. <laughs> That's fine. That's fair. And any feedback, Gail, Jason? <laughs> yes. First of all, can I thank you very much for have again for sharing that with us, um, and you. certainly that echoes the um, sentiments that I've heard when I've been able to speak to applicants, and I've been fortunate enough to speak to quite a few applicants in the, the first few months of my uh, tenure at NAS. Um, I think we would share those. Uh, wishes. Um, and uh, over the next uh, little bit, we're going to be working very hard to start to see some of that realized. Um, in terms of our wishes, we are always looking to have the most efficient service that we can. Um, and I think I would echo that we want that service to be transparent and easy to access for people. Um, this is a stressful process. We understand that. Um, and we really want to make sure that we are addressing the needs of, of the applicants Knowing that applicants don't have the same experience, we will process about last year, I think we issued 7,000 um, advisory reports, and that really is 7,000 different people. The other thing that I would say, and this actually goes back a little bit earlier to the tip, is how to interpret the NNAS report. And that's one of the things I'm hoping that we will be able to provide a bit more assistance to applicants as they're coming out of our process, not just as they're going through it. And that is this. The um, assessment of the education compares it to the education that a nurse is completing today in Canada, and it is a, a content analysis based on the information we receive. So you may get a rating that says you are comparable, somewhat comparable, or not comparable. If you get a, 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 a finding that says you are not comparable, that is not a shut door. That means when it was compared to what a nurse would have learned today based on the information that we were able to assess, it didn't look like it was fully comparable or it was comparable to what, what um, we would expect a nurse to be learning in Canada. When it goes to the regulatory body, they look at all of the um, education, they look at all of the information, and they make the determination. And oftentimes uh, it can be identified that where those gaps are, are in very are in areas that are easily uh, can be easily remediated and are not at all surprising things that have to do with le Canadian legislation those kinds of things so people should not see those as a negative likewise on the comparable or on uh, almost comparable uh, side of things sometimes you can have gaps that are fairly significant and in those cases the regulator may say we'd like you to do some bridging or we'd like to do some further testing. So neither of those are a definitive green light, 
yellow light or red light. They really are part of a whole bunch of information that the regulator will be assessing. So people should be very uh, positive when they well, approach the regulator. Thank you very much, uh, Jason Richter and Gail Waxman. We're um, out of time, but thank you very much for providing the clarification and for your openness about sharing the work that the NNAS does. Ishmael El Assad, thank you very much for uh, providing your feedback. And thank you. Thank Thanks. you for participating in our first podcast. For more information about the NNAS, go to their web website at www.nnas.ca. And if you want more information about CARE, Center for International Educated Nurses, and the services that we provide, you can visit our website at www.nnas.ca. Care for Nurses, that's C-A-R-E, the number four, N-U-R-S-E-S dot O-R-G. Have a great day.